Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. This Wicked Card reading is about the signs and the symbolism. What are the signs trying to tell you? The signs that you might see might be synchronistic numbers, might be certain animals, might be certain things along the path. What are the signs trying to tell you? We have three groups to select from. Group number one, lion. Number two, black egg. Number three, owl. Pause the video if you have to, to see which group you're resonating with. Timestamps are always in the description box below. Let's jump into these messages. Hello, group number one. So when it comes to what the signs are trying to tell you, automatically with the lion energy, um, the first thing that came to mind when I laid out the cards, and interestingly enough, when I laid out the three cards for the different groups, the lion was the only one that came out in the upright position. So what I got from that is that you're ready. The signs are trying to tell you that you're ready. Don't be this the kind of person, and I've been this kind of person for most of the time that, you know, once I became aware of pick a card readings before I even started doing them, I was this person. And when I say don't become this person, don't be that girl, don't be that guy, meaning you know what you need to do. And instead you find yourself looking for more signs. You keep looking for signs to tell you what you already know you need to do. So this is where you're watching reading after reading or maybe you're purchasing reading after reading and it's like what are you what what do you want to be told exactly what do you want to hear exactly no one will be able to tell you exactly what the journey will look like and no one will tell you exactly what the outcome will look like and you just have to have courage and move forward and with the lion coming out you're ready it's time it's time to move forward it's time to take action whatever that thing is you know what that thing is you know what that thing is and for me for the longest you know i used to procrastinate and after some time i stopped and questioned procrastination what does procrastination mean exactly and what came to me is that we procrastinate for one of two reasons we procrastinate because we're genuinely not interested or because we are afraid. And once I realized that, okay, I procrastinate because I'm genuinely not interested in certain things, it helped me to be nicer to myself and get off my own back because I was the type of person that would start a lot of things and not see them through. And I would start them and not see them through because I wasn't interested. The idea of creation was exciting and I created a thing or thought of creating that thing, but it just wasn't that exciting enough for me to see it through. But then I stopped and I observed the things that were reoccurring for me. It's like, say you get excited at the thought of becoming a chef. And every time you go to start it, for some reason you stop, you move on. And then the excitement comes back and you stop and you move on and the excitement comes back. And then that's when you gotta ask yourself, is it because I'm genuinely not interested in this thing? Why it keeps circling the block in my life? 
maybe it's because I'm afraid. And then you got to ask yourself, what are what could I possibly be afraid of when it comes to this thing? For some, maybe afraid of losing, of, of not uh, of, of things not going the way how you thought and looking like a failure to others. For some, maybe it's like, OK, I would need to lose quit my job in order to do this or that. And I don't want to take that chance. And I don't feel like that has to be the case. And if something that if you want to do something that would require you having to really leave your job, then now you know what to do at least. And what you might and what you might need to do next is, you know, pay up all your bills and debt if you have any and then start saving. Start saving a certain amount that will hold you over for a certain period of time so that you can give something a shot. So when it comes to this group, it's like, what I'm getting is like, no more excuses. It's time. It's time. No more excuses. It's time. So with the Astro Dice, we have, wow, Jupiter Energy came out twice and the number 11. Interesting. So the number 11 energy is a master number energy and the number 11 energy, the number one is repeated twice. And within that energy... It brings me to how someone might have an abundance of ideas and how the ideas could be so much to the, to the point that the person paralyzed and placed because the ideas are just so intimidating. That's that's an aspect of the number 11. Then we have the number, the, the 11th house aspect of the number 11. And this is your public image as far as your friend groups and the people you choose to associate yourself with where your goals are concerned and we have jupiter energy there so jupiter energy brings me to it's like there's this abundant of support there's this abundant of support and blessings that are coming through your friend groups and and when i say friend groups I'm not thinking friend groups like, say, third house, um, which third house wouldn't necessarily represent friend groups, but I could see how there are friend groups within the third house because the third house deals with our local community. It deals with our family members. It deals with, um, for me, it's like where we routinely spend our time, where we, where we are, uh, a place where we are um, where we, yeah, a place where we are consistently often, um, something close to our home or our home environment. Um, on, in one sense, we could say the third house energy is like, you know, your family members and the things in close radius to your home. For me, that energy also talks about like, say your coworkers and the people that you spend, it's like, they're like a, a, a community in a sense that you spend your time with on a regular basis. Um, but then when I shoot up to say the 10th house and how the 10th house deals with your goals and your legacy. And I feel like it's one thing when it comes to a job that we do because we need to pay the bills. And then another thing when it comes to, you know, a vision that we have for ourselves that we choose to pursue. And when I think of the number 11th and the 11th house energy, it's like, okay, these are the kind of people that you would network with and that you would meet pertaining to your goals and your ambition. So I feel like when it comes to these kind of people, like we're associating with these people because to me, it's almost like a house of constituents where when I think of like, say the third house energy, which deals with our family and local community, it would almost be like a house of familiarities, people who are familiar. Like I've known you forever. We've known each other. We're stuck together type of vibe. You know, circumstances brings us together where the 11th house energy is a constituent vibe for me, meaning that getting together with like minded people and from getting together with these like minded people, it's like there is this common thing that keeps bringing us together. And with Jupiter energy there and Jupiter energy is repeated, it's like crazy blessings coming from this, which, you know, for me, the universe blesses us through others. So with Jupiter's energy showing up twice, 
it's like it's time to move forward for you guys and just know that there will be others to meet you to guide you to support you on your path other thing comes up here also too might be i think of like the person who becomes a coach and then they turn around and coach other coaches or i think about the person who becomes a you know it's like you become something within the field and then you turn around and you educate and empower others who are also um within that field Okay, so when it comes to overall, we have the seven of wands in the upright position. And with the seven of wands in the upright position, it brings me to defense mode, feeling defensive about something. And the thought that comes to mind about the whole defense mode and feeling defensive about something brings me to the thought of um, you don't have to fight for what belongs to you. Whatever is meant for you, you don't have to fight for what is meant for you. And when I say fighting for what is meant for you, meaning getting up and having to go back and forth with others, I think of the person saying, oh, this person stole this from me or this person do that. Like if it was for you, it would be what's for you can only be for you. And, and you don't have to fight for what's for you. When I say you don't have to fight for what's for you, like I think of the person who's an athlete and or the person who is competitive and they're they're part of a competitive world. And it's like even though they're part of a competitive world and they're fighting for the gold or fighting for the win, it's like they're actually enjoying it. There's something about it that comes that they enjoy. They have the ability to respond to that in the process of going after this thing. It's not killing them. You know, it's not taking away their life force. So that's what I mean when I say that. And also to what's coming up is, um, you know, when they say if you're looking for a reason to be offended, you will find it. Be so with the seven of wands energy in the upright position, it's like overall, it's there's this feeling of defense, like one having to defend them, defend themselves feeling like I have to always keep defending myself. And I feel like that's a distraction. That's a distraction that also makes a person feel like they're not ready. Um, the king of pentacles in the reversal position brings me to what you're not seeing. And what you might not be seeing about the situation. I, I think of a person that, um, I think of like a mentor, a mentor, mentee type of vibe and a person come to the point where they've outgrown their mentor but because there's this fear of the unknown or maybe a lack of belief in oneself a person stays stagnant and not realizing that you've come as far as you can go you've gone as far as you can when it comes to this dynamic I love how Robert Greene speaks about that in his book called Mastery and also to knowing how to look out for certain mentors that want to keep you beneath them when you've come to the past that come to the point that you've grown, um, that you've grown to where it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move on. So I feel like what you might not be seeing is that a place where you might feel like there's security and stability. There's no security and there's no stability there. Also, too, what a person might not be seeing is that like, you know, like you're running out of money, you're running out of resources, something is running out, something is unstable about the foundation, it's time to move forward. And I feel like the instability about the foundation or maybe time to move on from the mentor time to go out on your own um i personally feel like in this life like the way i see myself in this life is i'm a soldier and when i think of missions soldiers you know when i think of here in the u.s and when the soldiers are sent out to war the whole mission is always already paid for before the soldiers even go out. 
So that means the soldiers will never need for anything while they're on this mission. And I feel like that's the same for us. And whenever things happen where it seems like we're running out of resources or our foundation isn't secure or something is off where that's concerned, I feel like that's just the universe's way of getting our attention so we could redirect ourselves or reflect. There's something to be gained from a, a situation where it feels like there's not enough. Normally, that's a form of redirecting. And when it comes to, say, surprises, we have the Ace of Swords in the reversal position. So some surprises when it comes to, say, um, the signs that the universe is trying to show you is that, I mean, is it really a surprise with the Ace of Swords in the reversal position is that ideas and things are presented to you, but you might find that you, shot, you shoot them down, dismiss them. Like I think of the person that's always coming up with a reason why. A reason, always have a rebuttal to justify why the universe doesn't support them. Always have a reason why. And it's like, when I think of life, it's like we're all storytellers. We, we've been, we came into this world being told stories. And then we learn to become storytellers. Instead, we've been told the kind of stories we should tell. And instead, why not tell yourself stories that uplift you, stories that empower you? Why tell the stories that the masses tell because it's a fact, where for me, a fact is a collective agreement. Why tell the story that everybody collectively agrees to and just because everybody collectively agrees to it? When it comes to the blessings, we have the seven of cups so i look at how on both ends of the reading is the number seven energy so you might find yourself in big time reflection mode trying to find some truth and when it comes to say this group the truth that you're probably looking for is like i think of the person that wants to like trying to have control over things so much to where it's like you need to know exactly how everything is going to go and it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Like you'll have to take your chances and just trust. But with the seven of cups being blessings is like the blessings is your ability to, to dream, to, to be able to dream whatever it is that you want to dream. When it comes to the spirit animal um, guiding forward, we have the bear. And normally for me in the upright position, the bear ref represents seasons and cycles and for me, the way how I'm seeing this message for you, group number one, it's time for you to go already. Like I think of, say, back in the day, um, how, like, say, in school, we would see video, not we would read stories about the pilgrims and, you know, um, how they will settle here and then settle there. And it was all about survival. Like when it comes to this group, it's almost like, say, we were back in those days and you came upon some um, land and you settled and you know you settled and you spent the win you settled and you spent the winter and the summer is the spring is now coming and it's time for you to head out and it's like you're talking yourself into staying where you are and it's like where you are won't be able to support you next winter it's time to head out it's time to head out so it's like the signs are telling you that it's time to move forward on your plans. It's time to head out. It's time to head out. And I feel like with this energy here in the position of blessings, it's like, you know, it's a blessing that you have the ability to to, to dream, like to, to have options. A lot there, you know, some people don't have options, but you have options. And with Jupiter coming out twice with the number 11, I get like there is this sudden and unexpected opportunity that lands on your lap. And it's a matter of are you prepared? And preparation for you will mean the courage to just act, the courage to keep putting one foot in front of the others and keep moving. The courage to be able to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving no matter what. Keep moving no matter what. 
Group number one, it was a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a tarot reading with me or check out my exclusive weekly pick a card readings only on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number two. So group number two, when it comes to what the signs are trying to tell you. So for you guys, the signs are trying to tell you to make up your mind when it comes to something. You might find yourself straddling the fence where it's like one minute, you know, you're like, okay, I want this for myself. And then the next minute you change your mind or one minute, you know, I want to move there or I want to go there. And then the next minute you change your mind. And sometimes that'll happen when we don't fully know ourselves or or invest time into getting to know ourselves and understand ourselves. And instead, we are inspired and encouraged by what's happening within the media and what others are saying, what's cool, what's hip and what's happening. Or sometimes for some of us, you know, we get so attached to others to the point that we're so invested in our relationships and our friendships to the point that we completely abandon ourselves. Um, what I'm picking up when it comes to this group is major mutable energy. So mutable energy means you could have a stellium or um, major planets or sun, moon and rising in a mutable sign or a mutable house and a mutable sign or mutable house. The mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces. Those are the mutable signs and the mutable houses are the third house, the ninth house, the 12th house and the sixth house. So you might find that you have strong mutable energy in your chart. And also to maybe the number nine in numerology, whether your life path nine, birthday number nine, but big mutable energy and or just a people pleaser. So with the mutable energy or people pleasing energy, you might find that um, you're always shifting and changing. And they say if you pretend to be something long enough, you'll start to believe that you're really that. So you might find that you're very inf easily influenced to a certain extent. And the people who come into your world, they influence your world, they influence your life, they shape your world. And this is where you have to be more conscious of that. And from being conscious of that, you're very selective about who gets the opportunity to take up residency in your world because they're going to impact it one way or the next. And, you know, we can't say, like this isn't something we put on others this is something we have to take responsibility for ourselves and you know say i deserve better and make better decisions that reflect the fact that you deserve better so when it comes to say what the signs are telling you the signs are telling you that you have to make up your mind or you know know yourself better and for me knowing myself better um is me being an observer of myself and being an observer of myself is me paying attention to how every little thing makes me feel like, and that don't mean that like every day you're like, it just pay attention to the things that stand out the most, pay attention to the things that irritate you, pay attention to the things that frustrate you. That's where the, the trails are because, you know, pain is a bookmark that holds space for your transformation you know, irritation, you know, discomfort is a signal for change. So pay attention to the people that frustrate you and ask yourself, why do they frustrate me? What is it about what? Why do they frustrate me? Or when people say things that hurt your feelings, frustrate you or get an, get your attention, you know, this is where you ask yourself, um, what do I believe about what they're saying about me to be true? for it to get this emotion out of me, this reaction out of me. 
Because when we don't believe it, we're, it goes over our head like, F that, like, that's not true. And it's like, they're tripping, that's not true. But when it hits, when it strikes a chord, when it cuts, it cuts because inside we believe that to be true. And it's almost like they're exposing our cut to the light so it hurts. So the signs and symbolism, the signs are trying to tell you to make up your mind. The signs are trying to tell you to be clear, be clear. I feel like when it comes to this group, like clarity is what's needed in your world. Whenever something is complicated is because there's a lack of clarity, indecision. Like something's only complicated because we refuse to see certain aspects of it for whatever reason. I think of the person who says, I don't know what to do about this relationship or I don't know what to do about X, Y, Z. That's untrue. You know what to do. Instead, say, why am I afraid to do what I know needs to be done? Why am I afraid to leave this relationship? Why am I afraid to leave this friendship? Why am I afraid to leave this family? Why am I afraid to leave this job? That's a better question to ask whenever you find yourself saying, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. When it comes to the astro dice, we have the 10, the number 10. So career, we have the moon and we have Uranus. Maybe for some of you, you might be looking into going into some kind of um maybe nursing could be for some maybe starting your own business um uh and with the moon energy like i'll say nursing maybe spiritual work healing work um and even say any kind of work where you're nurturing a thing i think of like the person who um grow plants to the person who starts the business and you're observing and seeing what the needs are of the business of the company and giving it what it needs in order for it to grow uranian energy there brings me to you know maybe someone is here maybe you're interested in astrology you're interested in um futuristic medicine futuristic way of healing maybe you're interested in um say i think of like the midwife the doula you're interested in birth, give, um, helping people with birth and also to something futuristic about that um, when it comes to doing that. I think of like the coach, someone that kind of like I think of like a person that works with people and helps people in their most sensitive times and a person in their sensitive times. I think of a person that's sick. Um, I think of a person that's going through something. So where it's like they feel vulnerable. So there's something around your ability to work with, assist, and support people who are in vulnerable stages. Just now a crow just flew above as I'm doing the reading. So people who are transitioning. And transitioning could mean people are going from one stage of their life to the next. And something about that transition is terrifying and you're helping them to find freedom or relief when it comes to their transition. Probably speaking on something futuristic or innovative pertaining to um, homes, families, nurturing and assisting others, and you know them finding more freedom when it comes to that. But the 10, the number 10, the moon and, also, and Uranian energy can also talk about for you being a better nurturer when it comes to your career and being more innovative, allowing yourself to be bold enough to speak the truth about, you know, speak the truth to yourself about certain visions that you have for your future, certain visions that you would like to see for yourself. I think of like the person who has, you know, wants to be seen as some kind of futuristic, innovative nurturer. And futuristic, innovative nurturer to me could look like, like I said, the person who is healing, working with others, astrology, numerology. Um, I think of Elon Musk, you know, you know, I think of Elon Musk in the sense that, you know, someone that looks out into the world and look at where the future is going and come up with futuristic, innovative ways to make the needs of people based on where they believe the future is going. Most might not um, agree with that or whatnot, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, when it comes to, say, tarot, okay. 
So we have the full card and the six of cups jump out together. And this is overall. So definitely taking a chance at something. And whatever it is that you're taking a chance at, you know, the six of cups energy is there. So something around helping or assisting the community. What you're not seeing is the justice card. And with the justice card coming out as far as what you're not seeing when it comes to this, the justice card would bring me to um, someone not being able to see how things balance out, someone not being able to see how um, how beneficial. So you might have this wild idea um, about something you want to do that will give back to the community, maybe help with children, child care, families, home, something to that. And with the justice energy there, it's like what you're not seeing is that this is what's needed. This is what's necessary. What you're not seeing is that if you make up your mind and take action, the universe will support you. Also, what comes to mind is like the person who comes up um, with their business and idea and structure it in a way to where they get paid by the government. Structure it in a way to where the government um, the government supports it in some in some interesting way. Um, I think when it comes to this group, if you find yourself feeling like there's no resources, you know, it's, it's lacking the creative ability to recognize the resources that are right in front of you. And when it comes to say surprises, you know, you might find that it feels like things aren't going your way or things are going against you. And I look and it's interesting how the number eight energy comes out both um, together. And with both energies, it's in the reversal position. And that brings me to something about a cycle. There's a breaking of some kind of a cycle. There's a breaking of some kind of a cycle. So when it comes to say the energies and what the universe, um, you know, what the signs are trying to tell you, the signs are trying to tell you that it's time to break old cycles. It's time to it's time to be honest with yourself about what it is that you want exactly. It's time for you to dream and fantasize about your ideal life pertaining to what is it that you would want to experience next. And you know, you don't got to worry about like what you're going to do for the rest of your life or what that's going to look like. Instead, you know, ask yourself, what kind of experience do I want to have, you know, right now within the next few years? And, you know, play it by ear in the sense that, you know, you invest into the experience you want to have and you enjoy it. And when it's time to try something else, you're open to trying something else. You know, you're open and okay with the thought of trying something else. With the lamb card coming out in the reversal position, dealing with the spiritual guidance moving forward, the lamb energy brings me to like it, 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 like listening to your own. It's like the lamb energy in the reversal position brings me to the fool. Um, where in the upright position, the lamb would bring me to being obedient. But it's like it, in the reversal is bringing me to the Uranian energy. It's like rebel. There's something about um, your current situation. And it's like like. It's time for you to rebel. But when I say rebel, for me, I don't believe in rebelling just for the sake of rebelling. Instead, I believe in observing my situation. And then I believe in observing my situation and then seeing what doesn't work for me, what's not working, being honest about what's not working, and then look to create something that works and you know when we look to see what's not working we're rebelling by deciding to moving away and when it comes to this group it's like it's time for you to break cycles it's time for you to break cycles and systems break comforts like it's like okay this is what we naturally do it's like a part of someone's comfort zone to approach things in a certain way and it's time to break up out of that so it's like what the signs and symbol, what the signs are trying to tell you is that it's time to make up your mind. It's like once you make up your mind, the universe could work with you. But until then, it's like stagnant. Things will be stagnant because it's like 
today you're having visions of a part of what it is that you would want for yourself and then the next minute you're um you know thinking about something else because what it is that you really want you don't you can't see how that would work it's not practical enough for you and then so you entertain the thought of something else and there's this going back and forth and none of the things that you're going back and forth about or maybe some of the things that you're most of i'm sure there's one thing that you really want for sure and the one thing that you want for sure what i'm picking up with this group is not what you're entertaining it's like you're entertaining what still what feels safe what makes sense and if you're someone who has bills to pay and responsibilities yes go be practical and get yourself a job that will pay your bills and take care of your family and while you're doing that you know save your money pay your bills be minimalistic manage your money manage your resources and then start thinking about how you can pave your way to where it is that you really want and you know whenever we're in a moment of lack and we're worried about our finances and our stability and where we are like we're not in the right space to be able to create our ideal situation so in the moment you know a person might have to do what they got to do so that they can have a peace of mind and then from that space start to dream the real dream start to dream your real dream but right now, you know, when it comes to this group, the signs are telling you like this egg means something in it. Think of the egg as a womb. Think of the egg as a womb. Think of it as the soil. What kind of seed are you planting in that soil? I think of the person who keeps planting lemon seeds, but then keep looking out for, look, keep planting lemon seeds and keep looking out for a grapefruit tree. Keep planting lemon seeds looking out for an orange tree. It's like, how? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. So it's like the signs are telling you, like, you need order. Order within your mind. Order within whatever it is that you want. And then get to a point where it's like you commit to that thing. But I feel like whenever we find it hard to commit and pick a path, it's because the ones we're entertaining probably aren't it. Or... The one that you really want is so damn scary to the point that it, you're traumatized at even entertaining it. So you put it way, way, way behind you and you bury it. You bury it. So it's like you can't even think of it when you think of possible things that you would enjoy. And then this is when I would encourage a person to think back to childhood and the things that you enjoy and pay attention to the kind of content and information that you gravitate towards naturally and spend most of your time consuming. I find that helps. But when it comes to group number two, um, when it comes to group number two, uh, I think of the person who, you know, like deep down you're afraid, but you probably haven't acknowledged that you're afraid. And you probably um, probably haven't acknowledged that you're afraid and might find yourself just entertaining all kind of things, entertaining all kind of things, meaning that, you know, you're distracted with getting this reading or you're distracted with this, that and everything else and looking for outside things to tell you what to do next. And it's like, like, what do you want to do exactly? What do you want to do? Nothing can, nothing or no one can tell you. What do you want to do? Make up your mind. Make up your mind about what it is that you want to do and stick to it and don't entertain anything else. When you get to that point, you'll see how the universe starts working for you. But I get the feeling of someone tired of the old way, tired of the old way. You want something new. You want something new. But at the same time, it's like afraid like afraid i get the feeling of someone afraid to do it on their own afraid to go alone and when it comes to this group before i wrap up and go i'll definitely say um it's, it's working on a person's self-esteem and self-worth like working on someone's self-confidence like i would find books get um help if you resonate with this message up to this point i would find books to help with that what's coming to mind this book called the courage to be disliked it's free on youtube I would find books and I wouldn't just um, run through the books. I would find books and I would 
I would take my time and read them and reflect and apply them to myself a um, little bit at a time and not just um, consume all this information because you might find that you're at this point where you're just consuming information but never stopping to applying any of it. So you've read so many books, seen so many videos, but your life doesn't reflect all the knowledge that you've consumed. It's like when you think about um, when you started consuming the knowledge and where you are, nothing, you know, for some nothing, you know, things might not have changed much. And if that's the case, that's because there's no application of the knowledge. So it's like, did you really learn what you thought you learned if you didn't apply it? So for this group, I would say working on, um, I would say for some, maybe even getting, uh, um, you know, um, interviewing uh, therapists or coach, therapists or coach to find someone who fits your personality, not someone who will pacify you, that could help you to get to the root of, um, like, I, I, I'm just getting self-sabotaging behavior. Someone that can help you to get to the root. I also get the feeling of someone, you know, lying to themselves and, 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 and knowingly lying to themselves or don't even know they're lying to themselves. I just get someone looping, just looping, just looping. And in order to stop this looping is to make up your mind and be honest. What do you want for yourself? And whatever it is, it needs to be scary. It needs to scare the shit out of you. Like when you, when, you, when you finally come to the conclusion of what you want for yourself, if it don't scare the poop out of you, then that ain't it. Because whatever it is that you truly want scares you so much to where it's almost like the thought of wanting it is traumatizing. So you bury it behind you and then entertain random things. But the random things you entertain got you looping. Got you looping. Group number two, it was a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a tarot reading with me, or check out my exclusive weekly pick a card reading only available on Patreon. The link for that is in the description box below. Before you go anywhere, please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. Group number three, what are the signs trying to tell you? So group number three, I feel like for you guys, what the signs are trying to tell you is that low-key, you're afraid of yourself. And I feel like I could probably relate to this to a certain extent, but not as much anymore, but I've been here. Where um, I remember at one point when I was younger and I used to pray to God never to allow me to see ghosts or never to allow me to see anything anything other than like uh, anything anything other than what everybody else see because i was afraid that i didn't know how to handle it and i was afraid of what it would mean about me i was afraid of what it would mean about me and of course over time i realized that um when it comes to perceiving spirits and ent entities and energy for me they don't show up like how people show up it, it's more of um it's more of for me it's like um all of my senses but my sight and hearing when i say senses i can't even say that it's like i'm perceiving something i feel like something is there but my hearing and my sight don't see it but then over time um based on observing my feelings I've been able to see through my feelings, if that makes sense. It's like those of you who are empathetic and can feel energy will feel through your, will see through your feelings. Or it's like you could telepathically, um, you, you, could, you, you could perceive telepathy through your feelings. Or it's like you could feel through your feelings, you could hear someone speaking about you. It's interesting. Those who know, know. But what the signs are trying to tell you is that you're blocking, you're blocking your ability and ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Why am I afraid of me or this aspect of me? What have I heard? <clears throat> what did I hear about this growing up? Uh, for me, I grew up um, going to church every Sunday and grew up in an environment where people 
weren't open to this kind of thinking. It was frowned upon. So for me, you know, I came into a world where, um, like, this wasn't okay. So when I started having my own experiences, it's like it was terrifying because I didn't want it to mean something about me, something negative about me. So when it comes to, say, this group who selected the owl energy, you know, think back to your early beginnings and how the people around you spoke about people who were intuitive, how the people around you spoke about people who were able to see spirits and things like that. For me, those people were seen as crazy unless they were a part of the church, then they were prophetic. But if they weren't a part of the church, they were crazy and probably demonic possessed. And I just didn't want to be one of those people. So for the longest, I ran and I fought and I avoided it. And over time, time and experience and opening up my mind and learning about new things helped me to see things differently. So for you guys, it's almost like you're experiencing a little glimpse of the universe winking at you. You're experiencing a little glimpse of things and it's like, I don't know how to like, also too, with the experiences, you might find that they make you lonely, lonelier because and, and, and the more the experiences come in, the more they might isolate you because, you know, some of you might find yourself trying to, to I know for me, when I started having the dreams and things and I would try to talk to certain family, I would talk to family about it and they would just look at me like, like, I don't know, like they would just, they would just look at me like they don't know what to say to me. Or, or in, in other cases, when they would come through, when, when the dreams would play out and some of them were some scary stuff and they would play out, then the family members went from looking at me confused to, to, to looking at me afraid and low-key probably even want to avoid me. Want to avoid me because they're afraid I'm going to say something they don't want to hear avoid me because they're afraid I might see something that they don't want me to see. So it, it, it's interesting. It's like you go from feeling crazy to then feeling like a problem based on my experience. So um, yeah, the more you start to perceive and become aware is the more you might feel isolated and alone. And you know, you got to be okay with that because I find that, you know, some people who have abilities and things, they start having those moments and they start numbing them out with substances, food substances and different things so that they could keep their friend circles and, you know, stick with the groups and things like that, that they're a part of, or, you know, be able to feel comfortable with amongst their family and peers, you know, some people deny parts of themselves. They reject themselves in order to have the family, the familiar things. But for me, like I wouldn't change this path for anyone or anything, because even though to a certain extent it's isolating, even though it's isolating, it makes me feel more confident. It makes me feel more confident about myself and confident about life. When most people go through life fearful and live life according to everybody else's terms but their own. For me, it helps me to confidently live life according to my own terms because it sh this experience and allowing yourself to be receptive to to, to, to your abilities, to your, to, to your strong intuition and things like that, it shows you that there's more to life than you've been told. And for me, it's like, okay, there's more to life than I've been told. Shoot, a matter of fact, it looks like everybody is just winging it. And it looks like some people are confidently winging it more than others. Some people look like, you know, look good um, wing in life. And some people look like they struggle win, wing, winning it, winging it, but they all win, winging it. No one have all the answers. So it's like, okay, if no one have all the answers, then might as well take my chances. 
take my chances and trust myself since don't nobody know. So for me, I find that the more I allow myself to open up to my intuition and open up to the different aspects of me that I've been afraid of, the more I feel confident, the more I don't feel alone, actually. In the beginning, it felt lonely, but over time, you don't feel alone. And interesting enough, what well, we got the 12th house, we can't make this up, you guys. We got the 12th house, Pluto. So 12th house and Pluto, that's like Neptune, Pluto energy. That's like psychic energy. That's mediumship ability. And then Mercury, it's like the mind open up. It's like the mind Mercury is in the 12th house with Pluto. So it's like the mind is in a place where it's like you're perceiving extraterrestrials you're picking up on other people's emotions, picking up on other people's thoughts. Dreams are getting very, very vivid. Getting deeper into psychology, you might find that you have an interest for psychology. And for me, I found that my interest for psychology was my way of practically trying to understand things that I didn't, um, that that were metaphysic, that were non-physical. So you might find that you're also having this interest, um, a deeper interest for metaphysics, metaphysical topic. It's wild that the 12th house came out and Pluto came out with this conversation. It's so wild. And this is the magical, you know, this is the magic that I love about this energy. And for me, like uh, op allowing myself to to be allowing myself to be and getting better at not lowering my vibration and i would lower my vibration through say weed i would lower my vibration through foods i would lower my vibration by entertaining certain company certain people like say being in certain relationships or certain things like that that feel that makes you feel drained that makes you feel heavy it's lowering your vibration and i will lower my vibration and it will cause me to feel like like my body like it, it will show up in my body from lowering my vibration and over time, allowing my vibration to rise and allowing myself to be receptive and of who I am, it's like it only brings more confidence and, and it makes you recognize what it truly means to be an alchemist. And for me, being an alchemist is me transmuting energy. So it's like you enter into a room and the energy in the room is tense. Because, you know, maybe somebody in there is funking up the room because they, they feel in some type of way. And you're aware of what it is that you're feeling when you enter into the room. You don't try to fight it, but instead you consciously sit in a, a neutral or a positive space within yourself. And how I constantly sit in that might be me sitting in a neutral space by me breathing and checking in and bringing my focus to how my breath feels going in and out, bringing my attention to grounding myself in the moment. That will shift the frequency in the room because opposing energies can't exist within the space. Or I look around the room and focus on things to make me smile, to make me chuckle. And on the inside, there is like an inside joke going on inside of me and nobody else knows that's bringing a totally different energy to the environment so what will happen is either something will cause for me to have to get up out of the environment or whoever is funking up the environment something will cause that to switch or they got to get up out of the environment it's like transmuting energy by holding you know by 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 by, by standing your grounds within your energy, being conscious of your energy and being conscious of the fact that it could easily be overthrown by other energies. So for me, um, 
stepping into this, I find myself feeling more free. I find myself feeling more confident. I think of how most people fear dying when you and, and how we've been conditioned to fear it. And it's like if energy never dies, then what's actually dying for real? Maybe the flesh. You just see things different and it makes you more confident. Like when other people are finding reasons to focus on how bad it is, you're able to see how good it is and you create good in your world. It's like you become the master of your world. You live life according to your own terms. Okay. All right. I see. I see. I see. I see. All right. So with the three of uh, three of wands in the upright position, I think of a person not seeing what they have to look forward to when it comes to, um, you know, like what is the point of this ability? I, th I think I just listed all the benefits and there's so much more. I didn't list all the benefits. I list a few pieces of the benefits. I think of when I was building my salon um, and, you know, I'm a single female and at the time my family wasn't here and I'm coming across all these professionals and, you know, some of them wanting to take advantage. And through my intuition and premonitions, I was able to know who to work with, who wasn't. I was able to feel the energy and know who's trying to finesse and know how to negotiate the situation just through the energy. You know, when it comes to say, uh, you know, what you're not seeing is, you know, what you're not seeing is the fear is like, what are you afraid of exactly? You know, ask yourself when it comes to your intuition, your gifts and your abilities, what about it scares you? For me, like I said, I grew up afraid of these things and afraid of myself in this way because people who were this way were spoken about, spoken about very negatively and I didn't want to be them. And then, you know, me being a recovering people pleaser, I want to please the people around me. So I didn't want to be the kind of person that people were laughing at and speaking negatively about. I didn't want to be them. I didn't want to be them. So ask yourself, what are you afraid of when it comes to your gifts and abilities? What are you afraid of? Because when it comes to this energy, it's like the sky <clears throat> is the limit. It's like if you can dream it, you can have it. If you could dream it, you can have it. And for me, the blessings about it is not only being able to bring peace into your own world. And like, say I woke up today and I found myself wanting me to make a big deal. I'm still in bed. My eyes is closed, but I'm awake. But my eyes are still closed. And a thought comes to mind about something that I've been dealing with. And I could feel the, my ego wanting me to make a fuss out of it to control the situation just for the sake of trying to control the situation. And then another part of me said, but are you really having the issues that you say you're having? Or are you just trying to control the situation for the sake of controlling the situation? And instead I chose peace because I know that things are going to work out for me anyways. And it's like, when you allow yourself to be receptive to your gifts and abilities, you start to realize that from the moment you came into this realm, every step of yours have been guided. So if every step of yours have been guided, then there's nothing for you to worry about, but show up and be you. And like I've been saying lately, it's like I see myself as a soldier and I'm on a mission here. And I think of like, say, in the U.S., whenever they send their soldiers off to battle, you know, or whenever soldiers are sent to battle, the mission is already paid for. The whole thing is already paid for. So think of yourself in this life and the fact that your whole experience is already paid for. So if your whole experience is already paid for then what you might call a job is really a prerequisite where you're gaining experience for the next thing. Whenever you find yourself not having enough, really it's the universe redirecting your step or reflecting to you your energy and the frequency that you're holding. 
When it comes to the spirit guidance moving forward, we have the dragonfly in the reversal position. With the dragonfly energy coming out in the reversal position, it's bringing me to being more focused. It's bringing me to, it's like I think of a person that keeps switching up. It's like a person that keeps um, distracting themselves. This energy brings me to eliminating the distraction. It's, it, uh, it brings me to getting focused. So for me, when it came to becoming aware and clear, when it came to um, who I am, it, it did require some discipline. I remember at the time um, doing some fast and fasting for me at that time was no, I wasn't watching any TV. And when it came to YouTube, it wasn't much of that unless it was something educational, but it wasn't a binging situation. I might watch something for um, a certain amount of time and then I'm spending the rest of the evening in silence. So it's like, imagine um, eight o'clock comes, it's dark out and you're just like sitting there in the dark, almost in a meditative state until it's time for you to go to bed. And it's like just moving around in silence or when it comes to certain foods that you would consume, you know, I would, at the time, I, I remember doing just raw, doing, I was raw at the time, raw fruits and veg, just fruits and vegetables and barely just barely any stimulation and at that time i also came across eckhart tolle and him and oprah did this um class about the book the new earth and he taught about meditation and it really clicked for me so that's when i started like doing meditation and what he said about meditation that clicked for me was him talking about a being the observer type of vibe so it's like you observe yourself breathing you're sitting in the seat, observe how your bottom feels in the seat. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but that's how I remembered it. So I remember just everywhere I go, everything I do, I'm just observing myself doing it. If I'm eating something, I'm observing um, all the details of me having the experience. And that took me out of my head and allowed my mind to be a clear channel. And that's where, you know, you find that your mind goes from a busy highway to a lonely dirt road the more you practice bringing your awareness to what's happening inside and on your body. Right now I'm doing this reading and the air is blowing and I could feel the cool air blow against my feet and certain parts of my body. So it's like, as I'm speaking to you, I'm also bringing my attention to my body. So it's like my... My, I'm not in my head overthinking anything. So then it allows my mind to be a clear channel and whatever is needed flows in and flows out. And doing that over time, I realized like I would be sitting in the silence and I'm like, it's like I'm sitting in a swimming pool and the water is still. And all of a sudden I feel a strong emotion or I feel something and it's like, what's that? But I'm not judging it. I'm not questioning. I'm just observing it. And then the phone rings and it's someone, um, you know, a friend talking about what they're going through. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, what they're describing is the emotion that came over me before the phone rang. So for me, there were discipline was required in owning, owning my skills. But for right now, before we even get to that part, I feel like what might be beneficial for your, this group to focus on is fears. You, any fears that you might have, become aware of any fears that you might have pertaining to your intuitive abilities or intuitive people. Um, whatever fears you have, I feel like if you help yourself to um, question those fears and the truth within them, that will help you to free yourself up and allow yourself to flow, allow yourself to just be. Group number three, it was such a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a tarot reading with me or check out my exclusive weekly pick a card readings only available on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. Before you go anywhere, please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. 
take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.